Okay, so today I want to talk about two CSS properties, touch action and pointer events. Now they both have to do with how users interact with your pages and they have implications for content when it comes to JavaScript as well. So I want to go through these. Now touch action has a few properties here, none, auto, pan x, pan y, pan left, right, pinch zoom and manipulation. And you can tell by these names that they all have to do with gestures. So typically for mobile, when you're talking about whether or not the user can use their finger or a stylus to swipe, pan, pinch, zoom, zoom in, zoom out, stuff like that. Those are all called gestures. Now, touch action, if you set it to none on any element, just like you would with any CSS property, what you're saying is that the person cannot use any sort of gestures. If you want to use some, you can come in and say touch action. And you can see here that there were some prefixed versions of them like MS. So touch action. And let's say I put in here pan x and that's in the x direction so that's left or right but I also want to allow somebody to do pinch zoom so this is how I would enter it I would put in both names with a space in between them so saying these are both allowed now that's touch action or to disable it entirely in all gestures on an element we'd say none okay pointer events this has to do with your finger a mouse a stylus any of those things and Typically, most of the time it has to do with clicks, but anytime you're hovering or you're dragging an element, you've clicked, there's a sort of a click start, a click end, or a mouse start and a mouse end. Um, these are the types of actions that the user is going to be using to interact with your content. And again, with pointer events, we can come in here and say pointer events, and then use one of these properties, none, auto, so you let the element itself determine whether or not it's something that can happen. And then the rest of these, other than none and auto, the rest of these all have to do with SVG. So scalar vector graphics. This is an XML based language. It looks just like HTML, but it's for drawing graphics on the page. It's an embeddable element, just like a, a canvas is, or an image element, something there's a tag you put there and it gets replaced with other content. So the SVG, you're writing markup and then it will draw pictures on the screen. The pointer events, a whole bunch of these have to do with what is the content inside your SVG and which parts of the SVG do you want the person to be able to interact with and in which ways. So fill and stroke, these are what SVGs are made up with. Uh, you've got the fill portion, the stroke is the line drawn around shapes visible and painted the difference between the two of those so i've got visible painted visible oh there should also be a, a painted in here so visible is whether or not you've set the visible property inside of there to true or false inside of an element that's in your svg painted means there's a color that's been added it doesn't matter whether it's visible or not it's just painted this element has a color Visible, I don't care about the color, I just want to know whether or not it's visible. If you want it to be both, you can use visible painted. Most of the time you're going to use fill, stroke, or all, or none. All right, so let's now take a look. I'm just going to comment this out. And let's take a look at how this is going to impact our page. Now, jumping into the browser here, I've got a paragraph. Uh, it's inside of a div, and there's an anchor that's inside the paragraph. Next, I've got a second div. Inside that, there's an anchor tag. The paragraph is inside the anchor, so the whole thing is a link. Then I've got two buttons. Inside this button, I actually have the SVG on my web page, and inside this last one, it's an image tag that is inside of a button. So we'll take a look here. There's my first div, and I've got a paragraph with an anchor tag inside, then a div with an anchor that's wrapped around the whole paragraph. The third one, Inside my div, I've got a button. Inside the button, here's the actual SVG element. So inside the SVG, I've got two circles, and there's an SVG anchor inside of here. That's going to come into play in a minute here, too. Not all SVGs have to have an anchor tag anywhere inside. You can have paths or different shapes that you create. There doesn't have to be an anchor. 
that's not going to mean that we can't add a click event to the SVG or to some component that's inside of it. And the final one, I've got a button with an image tag that points to an SVG file. Now this SVG file, it's the same content as this one right here. So here is the SVG. You can see it's just, it's an SVG file. It's a text file with a .svg extension, anchor tag with a couple of circle elements inside of it. Okay, in my script, what I'm doing is I've got all four divs, my paragraphs, my anchor tags, my buttons, the two SVG or the SVG element and the anchor that's inside of that first one, and then the image tag. And then I'm trying to target the anchor tag that's inside that last one. Now that's this one right here, the image tag that's inside the button. I'm trying to target the anchor here that is inside that loaded SVG. Now we can't actually do that. We can't get to that element. If you load the SVG this way as the source of an image tag, yeah, it will display that, but we can't interact with the elements. If you want to interact with the elements, you have to actually embed the SVG on the page. So with all of these different parts, what I'm doing is I'm calling a function to say what was clicked. So that is the event target. That is the element that I actually clicked on. And then which of the listeners, so which of all these listeners right here, which one of those was called. So what is the current target? It's going to tell me this part, the thing that was in front of add event listener. Target, the thing my, my mouse actually interacted with, and current target is this thing right here, the listener. So let's take a look. If I click on this anchor right here, Okay, so I get the, I clicked on the anchor tag, which triggered the listener on the anchor tag. Okay, makes sense. Here, I clicked on the anchor tag, and that also triggered the listener that's on the paragraph. So it bubbled up from the anchor to the paragraph, and then from there, it bubbled up to the div. So it went all the way up. That's where I have my listeners. I don't have a listener on the body. If I did, that would show up here as well. But you can see it bubbled all the way up. This next one, when I click, I clicked on the paragraph because that was the, the lowest down element. The thing that was closest to my mouse when I clicked was the paragraph. It triggered the paragraph listener, then the anchor listener, then the div listener. So you can see these things are bubbling up. Now, for these ones, we have the div. If I click over here, you can see, yep, we clicked on the div. If I click on the edge here, I'm actually clicking on the button. There we go. I clicked on the button. It triggered my buttons listener and then it bubbled up to the div. And that's the div again. If I move over a little further, now here, I clicked on the SVG element. You can see there's a little bit of white space around that. And that's the margin around the SVG that's inside of that button. So I actually clicked on the SVG element, so it triggered my SVG listener, and then it bubbled up to the button listener, and then it bubbled up to the div listener. So we're going all the way up. And then if I move over the circle, this is where my anchor tag is. You can see that the mouse turns into that little hand, the pointer. I didn't have anything in the CSS that do to, to do that. That just naturally happened. When I move over here, because there's an anchor tag, around part of my SVG, that becomes the thing that looks like I can click on it. And when I click, or let's clear it out and do it again. You can see the circle element is what I clicked on. So that triggered the listener that was on the SVG anchor, and then that bubbled up to the SVG, which then bubbled up to the button and then up to the div. So we've got this bubbling going up all the way up. Clear that and do the final one. Same thing. I click on the div. Nothing's happening on the button. There we go. There's the listener on my button. I guess I don't have a listener on that final div. I move over. I'm clicking on the SVG still, but it's the image element that I got the listener for and then the button that I get the listener for. And then the div would fire as well if I had a listener on that final div. So we've got image and button. Do it again here. Image and button. That's where it's bubbling. It's not talking to the SVG. And if I click in the middle here, again, image and button, I'm not able to interact with the SVG.
Okay, so that's the bubbling taking place of the event moving up through all those listeners. Now the pointer events. Let's do something with that. If I come in here and I say in the div pointer events, oops, not position, but pointer events, and I set that to none, that is going to cascade down from the div down through everything. So if I come up here, I click, nothing is happening. I click on the anchor, nothing is happening because the div, the paragraph, the anchor, all got pointer events, none. So it says, okay, I'm going to ignore all of the click events or the stylus events, the finger tapping events. Those are ignored. Same thing here. Here, I click on the div, I click on the button, I click on the SVG, I click inside the SVG, nothing. Div, button, SVG, nothing is happening because this cascades down inside of all of the elements. If I want to start to pick something up, I can override it. I can go into pointer events on the anchors inside my SVG. That was the thing where I got that cool little hand showing up automatically. And well, I can set this to fill or stroke or painted or all. I'm just going to use all. Save that. So I'm allowed to click. I've basically created an entry point for the event. Now, down inside of here, I click on the div, nothing, nothing, button, nothing, SVG, nothing. But when I move over the anchor and I get that little hand, now that's when it worked. So I am allowed to click, or rather my click will trigger event listeners. So it started on the anchor tag, it moved up to the SVG, it moved up to the button, and it moved up to the div. Even though I said pointer events none for everything else except for the anchor tag, this is still going to bubble up. It's just I've created an entry point right here. So from this point and everything up from that point as I bubble up through all the HTML. So let's minimize some of these and take a look at what we're doing here. So here's my anchor tag. If I click on the circle, I'm clicking inside of the anchor tag. This is where my event starts. I'm allowed to click on this because that was inside of the anchor tag. The anchor tag had pointer events all. So I'm allowed to, or rather my JavaScript will report back that somebody has clicked on this. That property cascades down into here. So I'm allowed to click on the circle. That can act as a trigger. My event starts here goes to the anchor, and then because the event was allowed to enter at this point, it can bubble up through circle, anchor, SVG, button, div, and any of these guys that have listeners on them are now allowed to report back to me saying, yeah, go ahead. Down here at the bottom, I click, nothing's happening because I'm not able to access the anchor tag that's inside the SVG. Okay. So that's really what I wanted to get at was the fact that we have these pointer events that we're assigning in CSS, which is allowing us to basically turn off or on access points for any event listeners. This overrides the fact that we've added click listeners to everything. That's what that lets us do. And you can override them at any point. So my div, okay, great, it's turned off. My button, I could say pointer events, it's going to be turned on. And then I'm going to get down to the SVG again, and that's going to be inside my button. And for this, it's going to be pointer events, none. So I've turned it off again. So at the button level, I'm good. At the SVG, I can't. And at the anchor level, I can. And we could even go further down and say, you know what, if you've got a circle inside of there, pointer events, none. Okay, so it's on, off, on, off, on, off, all the way up this chain. I come inside of here. I clicked on the circle because that's what's inside the anchor tag. That's the thing that's furthest down. I click on that circle, but I'm not allowed to enter at that point. But my event is going to bubble up still. It's going to go from the circle to the anchor up to the button. The button is giving me the listener. It's saying, okay, yeah, the button was allowed to get it. 
So the button, which has the SVG inside of it, is still accepting it. So you do have to be careful sometimes based on the way your SVG is structured. So whatever the elements are that you have down inside here, this can vary. I don't have to have circle elements. I could have path elements. I could have use element that's pointing to a definition that's using a circle or a definition that has an anchor inside of it. There's a whole bunch of different ways that this can be written as well. So how do we handle this? Well, your best bet is probably to do something like this, where you say, you know what? Anything that's inside the SVG, I'm going to allow that. And then we can say the button is going to take it, or we could say none, but the button is going to take it. Lots of different ways that you can structure this. Just keep in mind when you're writing your JavaScript that it could change which object is actually getting the event. So here I've said anything that's inside, if it's a fill, anything inside my SVG, that can take the event. Buttons are also allowed to do it. So I can start at the anchor, it moves to the SVG and then up to the button and then up to the div. But if I click on the div, nothing's going to happen because we've got that set to none. If I set button to none, nothing happens there. Nothing in the SVG. It's not until I get to this point. All right. So a lot to keep in mind, a lot to think about and experiment with. Just be very careful when you are playing around with these and writing your script. You have to make sure that these two parts are going to be in sync. All right, so I hope that helps. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. I will have links to the SVG file and to the um, HTML. Well, actually, the SVG is already embedded inside of here. So I'll just have a link to the HTML down inside the description for you. And as always, thanks for watching.